Hi everyone, in this quick video we'll deploy Aegis to our system and use it to update a secret file at runtime that a Kubernetes workload is using. I'll also dig into Aegis architectural details and explain how Aegis does what it does internally. But before anything, what's Aegis in the first place? Aegis is a lightweight Kubernetes native secrets management solution that keeps your secrets, well, secret. With Aegis, you can rest assured that your sensitive data is always secure and protected. You can browse this URL to learn more about Aegis, but back to our demo. Here is the folder structure you get when you clone the Aegis repository from GitHub. In this listing, Spire acts as our identity provider that will distribute short-lived X509 digital certificates to the workloads so that the workloads can establish secure MTLS communication with the Aegis components and the Aegis system. And Safe is our secret store where an administrator or a CI CD pipeline can bind secrets that workloads use dynamically at runtime. Sentinel is the only pod that is allowed to directly push secrets to Safe. So it is kind of sort of like your bastion host, so to speak. What do I mean by that? You should secure Sentinel as if it was your bastion host using Kubernetes network policies, firewalls, and proper RBAC. This demo folder contains a demo workload to demonstrate how the Aegis secrets are consumed by the workloads. And for our demo, we'll start with an empty Kubernetes cluster. And as you see, we don't have any workloads running. But just to make sure that we don't have any Aegis remnants from the former demos lingering from the previous deployments, I'll execute this make clean task, which will uninstall Aegis and anything related to it if we have it on the cluster make clean and nothing to clean actually so we are good to go we'll first install spire onto the cluster because spire will be required to dispatch x509 svit identities to establish secure mtls communication between components so it is kind of our identity control plane we need it for our components to talk to each other but before that let me show you the source code of our demo workload cd demo and let's look at this main.go file which is the only source code that our demo workload runs here is what the demo application does in a nutshell in an infinite loop we read a file on the containers file system if we cannot find the file we print an error message Else, if we do find the file, we print the contents of the file. And we do that every 5 seconds in an infinite loop forever. And that's literally everything that this demo workload does. And once we deploy Aegis, this secrets file will be created and updated through an Aegis sidecar. And the deployment manifest of this demo workload is nothing fancy either. It is a typical deployment with one replica that contains our main image. And we also have an Aegis sidecar. As you see, the sidecar and the main workload pod shares the same volume. That's how the sidecar updates the secrets file and makes it available to the main process dynamically at runtime. After this brief segue, let's get back to installing Spire. I'll cd into the Spire folder and just display the contents of this make file. And the make file has a single deploy task that deploys everything under this Kates folder. So I'll just go ahead and run make deploy. And just like that, we have Spire installed up and running inside a Spire system namespace on our cluster. Now let's move back to the demo workload and deploy that demo application to our cluster as well, CD demo. Then I'm going to run make all, which will build and deploy the demo workload to this cluster. Now that it's done, let's list the pods that we have in the default namespace, kubectl get deployment, and then kubectl get pow. And we have this demo pod healthy and running. And when we tail the logs of this main container of the demo pod, you'll see that the secret file doesn't exist in its file system. And therefore it's displaying this, hey, I couldn't find this file. I'm going to try again later in five seconds message constantly. I'll move this terminal here and to gain some additional clarity on how things work, I'm going to open a new window and tail the logs of the sidecar pod here as well. And there it is. Right now the sidecar is having trouble connecting to the safe API endpoint because 
well, we haven't deployed safe yet. We don't have a safe API for the sidecar to talk to. So let me open a new window and deploy safe there. But even before that, I want to show you something else. I'll CD into this demo folder again and display the contents of this Kate's identity YAML. This YAML file defines a cluster Spiffy ID custom resource, and that's how SAFE knows which workload to deliver which secret to. Essentially, this is the identity of our workload. So when we define this identity, Spire handles all the heavy lifting of establishing a public key infrastructure, delivering short-lived X509 digital certs, and expiring and rotating them behind the scenes so we can establish workload to workload and workload to Aegis MTLS connectivity. And this way, you don't have to worry about establishing a secure identity control plane yourself. To communicate with SAFE, our workload needs to have this Spiffy ID. Also, this pod selector you see here has to match the labels of our workload pod for Spire to securely deliver X509 digital SVIT certificates to the workload pod. That clarified, let's go back to the SAFE folder and check out its deployment YAML descriptor as well. Again, nothing fancy here. We have a deployment with a single replica that has a single container image. Our container will be serving at port 8443 and all the communication will be secured through MTLS using Spire SVIT X509 digital sorts that will be delivered to save through this Spire agent socket. And the make file is clear as well. When we execute make all, we build everything and deploy save to the cluster. So let's do it. Make all. And we have save successfully deployed to our cluster inside an Aegis system namespace. And as soon as that happens, something else happens too. Our workload is not displaying an error message anymore. Instead, it's displaying an empty secret, which means that this sidecar pod was able to securely talk to SAFE over MTLS, ask for its secret, and SAFE told it that it doesn't have any, and therefore the sidecar created an empty secrets file, and the main process was able to read that file and display its contents, which is empty at the moment. Well, although this is progress and it's fun and exciting, if we cannot create and deliver an actual secret to the workload, then displaying an empty file is not very useful, is it? And to create secrets, we'll need another Aegis component, which is Sentinel. And to deploy Sentinel, we'll follow a similar process. We'll CD into the Sentinel folder, then run make all. But before that, let me show Sentinel's Kubernetes deployment descriptor as well. Again, aside from the Spire-related volumes and environment variables, there is not much going on, to be honest. This is a deployment with a single image and a single replica. And the make file looks familiar as well to the other make files that we have seen so far. So I'll just go ahead and run make all. And just like that, we have Sentinel deployed to our cluster into the Aegis system namespace. And since this is a development deployment and this is a demo lab, I can execute shells inside this Sentinel pod. And for production deployments, to keep things secure, there will be a more hardened setup where you'll only be allowed to execute a very restricted binary that is only allowed to talk to safe and nothing else. But this is a demo lab, like I said, and shells are fun. So let me execute Z shell inside this pod. Kubectl exec dash it, the name of the pod, dash n, Aegis system, dash dash, slash bin, slash zsh. And we are introduced with a welcome screen. And that welcome message even has a sample command that shows us how we can register a secret to a workload. And when I type Aegis, I get a more detailed help message in case I need it. And now what I'll do is I'll copy this command and run it. Aegis dash W name of my workload dash S the contents of the secrets file and press enter. So it acknowledges that it understood my command and executed it and I get an OK response, which I think means everything went well. And it did actually, because after a few seconds, I'm able to see the updated secrets file in my workload container as a log line. So let's make sure and change the secret and push it again to see if the workload container updates its secret manifestation as well. So I'll change the secret and make it a username password pair, username root at masterdb and password is 
keep your secrets. And when I press enter and wait for a few moments, the new secret is reflected to the workload dynamically at runtime. So, so far so good. And as a final step, in case you want to uninstall Aegis, you can execute make clean at the project root and it will remove Aegis and Spire from your cluster. Also in this quick demo, I installed every component one by one to show how everything ties together. And you can as well execute and make all at the root of this Aegis folder. And that will install everything that we have walked through here so far with a single command at a single step. So let's do it, make all. And after a while, we end up having save, sentinel, sidecar, spire, and even this demo workload that we can play with. Let us use sentinel once more to make sure that things are working as they did before. And yep, our demo workload successfully received its secret, which also concludes this mini demo. Aegis is pretty early in its development process, so there is a lot going on and there is a lot more features planned to be implemented in the upcoming releases. And you can check out the Aegis project boards to have an idea of what's coming up next. Yet as far as an introduction to Aegis goes, that's all there is to it. Until next time, may the source be with you.